Now we are going to begin building your robot and this video covers the LEGO NXT Mindstorm kit and we're going to walk through what we actually do in terms of opening the kit, seeing what's in it, and how we actually begin putting these pieces together. So <clears throat> there are a variety of plans that are available uh, when you purchase one of these kits and LEGO provides a, a, a bunch of example designs and then there's other organizations out there uh, one of the more popular ones is uh, Carnegie Mellon's Robotic Academy. So they have a lot of curriculum uh, material that's basically open uh, for educators. And then, of course, you can just go out and, and Google, you know, construction plans for the NXT robot, and you'll just see a whole variety of different plans that people have created. Some people... Uh, give them out for free some people want you to pay for them but there's always enough plans out there so you can if you don't want to invent your own design you can go out and, and grab a plan <clears throat> so when you first start with the with building one of these mindstorms kits it's always a good idea to to use a plan because the plan's going to show you how to use various pieces to see what the pieces are for and just get a feel for what can be done in the way that you do things using the the mindstorms kit so let's start out by building the taskbot so the taskbot looks like this and this is a plan that is provided by Carnegie Mellon's Robotics Academy and this is this plan is provided to you as part of this course so if I take a look at that plan what you're gonna see is this <clears throat> so you'll these plans are always given in a very graphical format which is very good for basically for everybody but especially for uh, children or you know young students <clears throat> and it turns out that this is not only a uh, an easy way to start but it's there's a pedagogical method behind it because engineers especially uh, one of the things that uh, is kind of required of them to be successful is visualization so it's this whole this art of thinking about the way that geometries exist in space and how they look as you rotate them and so these plans give a, a lot of uh, a lot of experience dealing with that so when you come into this this plan Go ahead and click through. And what you'll see is they always start off with a list of parts that you're going to need. Now, this is not the parts needed for the entire robot. Sometimes the plans give it for the entire robot. Sometimes they give it for just the section that you're going to build. But you can kind of come in here and you can see, okay, we need this piece right here. We need these wheels. We need all sorts of things like that. And let me, at this point, let me show you the kit that I have. And I'll go ahead and just open it as if I've just open the box okay so the first thing that happens is you're gonna see you know this divider this organizer that has all these kits or has all these piece parts in it and you know one of the things that happens is you might try to spend some time organizing where the piece parts go because uh, when they come to you they might be in bags and it's good to kind of just get them organized and you know you can organize them logically how you like to organize them uh, <clears throat> everybody's a little bit different but it's more organization is more about being able to find it quickly and then when you go into this thing you're gonna see you know a lot of times they'll give you They'll give you an instruction manual, and in this case right here, they give you something that's very similar to the to the task bot, but it kind of shows you some uh, ways to hook sensors on. We're going to build this task bot that doesn't have any sensors on it because we just want to get started with having something that we can, you know, connect to the computer, install the software, and get it moving before we move on to actually building something more sophisticated. And then when you get into the kit, you're going to see a variety of things. So this right here is the NXT brick, is what it's called and it is the computer system so this is where the computer resides it's where the battery batteries are placed now you can you can order a rechargeable battery which looks like this and then it's it's charged with a uh, little wall adapter that you can actually take and you just plug it into the into the rechargeable battery and then it's got lights on it so it'll be red when it's dead and green when it's charged and these NXT bricks you, it just pops right in here directly if you don't have rechargeable batteries or you didn't purchase that then you could this just takes standard AA batteries so you know it takes six AA batteries so you pop pop all those in you always want to get the batteries in there first because once you assemble the robot sometimes it can be tough to access this uh, inevitably the batteries are going to go dead so you're going to have to access it well that's why the the rechargeable is kind of nice because a lot of times you can just get the AC adapter in there and charge it without deep pulling your robot apart uh, I will say the AA batteries tend to last a lot longer than the rechargeable battery 
So it's kind of a trade-off of your personal uh, personal feel. Then what you're going to see in there for this page, you're going to see things like the wheels, and you're gonna, and the wheels aren't necessarily assembled, so you're going to have to put the rim and the the actual the rim on the tire there, and all sorts of things. And let's see. Okay, and then you see all these parts. Let's go to the next page and see what else we have. Now here's another main component is. Uh, in addition to the brick, this is going to be your servo motor. So this, the NXT comes with, I believe, three of these servo motors, and these are used for everything for from locomotion to moving arms and actuators and all sorts of things like that. Then there are these uh, cables that come with it, and this is how you connect the motors and sensors to the NXT brick. So you see on the NXT brick that there's going to be these ports where you can plug these cables in and then you plug these cables directly into either a motor or a sensor. And one of the things to be aware of is that there's A, B, and C. When you look at your NXT brick, there's going to be A, B, and C. And these are used for your motors. Okay, And then you're going to have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And those are going to be used for the variety of sensors which, actually, which come with your, uh, with your NXT. So one of the things that will always happen is if, you, if your motors aren't spinning or your sensors aren't, aren't working, one of the first things to check is to make sure that you have them plugged in correctly. Okay. Okay, then you, when you also look in your box, we're not using them right now, but you'll see a variety of sensors, and we'll go into this in another video, you'll see a variety of different sensors, push button sensors and, and ultra, you know, ultrasound sensors and all sorts of things in there, and this sensor right here, which is a very popular sensor because it kind of makes the NXT robot uh, look like a, a humanoid or make it look more personable to the student. Okay, so you have these things, and one of the things that I want to point out, so you have all these parts, one of the things that I want to point out, you can, let's go to page three, we have some more piece parts in there, and, okay, so when you come along here, and let's get to page five, which is where you actually start building, one of the things that you'll notice is that you have these, uh, basically, they're not really trusses, but they're just these pieces that you, you can plug you can plug directly into. So you take pieces like this and you're going to plug, you know, little little uh, other pieces into there. <laughs> That's how you connect them together. But you, you look at these and you have a whole bunch of different sizes of these. So right away you're you're looking at them and you say, geez, how do I know which one is which? And so that's what this number is right here. So if you look at the number, you see this 15 right here? It's talking about the number of holes in there. So that's the sizing of it. And then the way that they do the color, you'll notice that there's different different colored pieces in here. They just use different colors uh, in the graphics themselves to differentiate between the colors. Then you have 15, that means the number of holes. So this one is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's how I know that this is a 15 piece. Okay, so that's what that number is. Then when you come along and you start looking, if I go into uh, into page six and I look at some of these little uh, these little connection bars or axles. So for example, this right here, this right here is the piece that they're talking about. And you say, well, how do I know which one is which? Because there's a bunch of different there's a bunch of different sizes on here. And what that means is they they also have a number three and five. And what they're talking about is this is the same size as a three hole or a five hole piece. So if I came over to my kit and I pulled out a let's see, let's look for a five hole piece. So let's see a five hole piece. Here's a three-hole piece. That one will be easier. So here's a three-hole piece. So you can see it's got three holes there. Well, then that little three-piece connection point uh, is also the same size. So that's how you different, differentiate the sizes there. Okay. So all you do, let me. So that's how you differentiate between all the piece parts. So let me go back to page page one and we'll kind of come up with some of these names because I'm calling them like sticks and things and and when you actually build these things there's actually names for them so you have things like beams and there's angular beam and modular beam so angular beams are going to be the ones that you know have an angle to them or a tilt in them and then you're going to have module beams so 13 15 module beams these are going to be the 
But these are going to be the ones that are straight. And then, I mean, you have tire and hub, those are the words we use. Then you have servo motor and you have axle. So that's what these, these pieces right here were. Is these, are, these are the axles that are going to go in there. And then you have cross blocks and double cross blocks and axle, axle extenders. You certainly don't need to memorize any of those. You can just, you, you can just visually see what they're talking about. Okay. So I go along here, and then let's see, just some other names, tooth gear and brushing and connection peg and all that sorts of stuff. So you get all these piece parts, and here's the, the kind of the big piece of advice that I give everybody when they start with this. It's hold the piece exactly like it is in the drawing, okay? So if I come up and I put this, and I'm going to do this relative to the instruction, what I want to do is I want to orient it exactly as it is in the drawing and then when I do that I'm going to come along and try to place these things just as the picture is showing so I'm going to come in from this side and plug it in so if you orient the pieces exactly like the drawing then you're you're fine yeah a lot of times people run into trouble when they don't orient it and they can't figure out which way is which and so they have a lot of uh, left and right flips and it can be a little confusing and a little bit frustrating uh, another another thing that's going to be frustrating is sometimes you just don't have the pieces in your kit so that's where you can do a couple things number one is you can try to reorder a missing piece or you can improvise so your robotics is all about improvisation so when you you build these kits you're just learning the capability of what's going on and then you're going to run into something where you want to add a feature or you want to or something didn't work or you're missing a piece and so you just kind of look at how things go together and you can kind of add on your own you know features yourself okay so you go through this and it's this has you know 30 pages this is a 32 page document this takes anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour to walk through and assemble this and it's good as the teacher to go through this uh, exercise. So if you're a if you're a middle school science teacher and you're going to try to create a robotics team to teach some aspect of STEM or or compete in some sort of robotics competition, it, the temptation it's very tempting to just say, okay, students, go ahead and do this. But it's good to go through this exercise just to get familiar with what the pieces feel like and what it you know the common pitfalls you know like that that uh, orienting the piece just like it is on in the page of the the construction drawing that's something that I just kind of picked up on as I was building these and I, w I never would have picked up on that if I wouldn't have built the the kit myself so if I just would have handed it over to the students and says here go do this and so that little piece of advice uh, goes a long way the other thing is to just get a just get a feel for the frustration sometimes that some people can have when you're when you're dealing with pieces like this because these pieces are tiny and they're they have almost no mass relative to our hands so they're sometimes they're very hard to to hold on to and they're very difficult and it can be a lot of you know lead to a lot of frustration so just being aware of what the frustration is that some of the students that deal with these kits goes through is, is very insightful and it helps you kind of guide them through uh, using them so okay so we go along and we go through this huge document and you can see you can see the servos are coming into play and I just want to get down to where the connectors come in okay so the connectors right here you can see the connectors are going to go into B and C and that becomes very important when you start programming because when you program this you need to tell the program oh okay I'm gonna make the the B motor spin forward and the C motor spin forward if you have it connected improperly then it might go it might not work or only one of them works so it becomes very important the other thing to keep in mind is that the cables are different lengths so you want to try to use you know to the best of your ability use a cable that is as short as possible based on how much how many cables you have because then it just kind of gets in the way and you can you can usually use like uh, twist ties and stuff and kind of wrap them around and bundle them so that they don't get in the way so when you're all done with this this is what your task bot is going to look like and again we're, we haven't programmed it or anything like that so let me let me show you a picture of my task bot that I created so there's my task bot right there sitting on my desk and <clears throat> What we'll do now is once you get that, the next step is really connecting it to the computer. So if you think about what we're going to do next, it's we've constructed the robot right now. And I, I put a little check here because we actually haven't completed this step. In this module, what we now want to do is we want to connect 
we want to install the programming software for the NXT and then we want to connect it make sure that the drivers all install and then the first thing you do is you usually install a uh, make sure that the firmware and the NXT brick is up to date and so there's some there's some buttons in there that you press in order to accomplish that and then once we get all that in there then we can look at things such as locomotion and when we look at locomotion which is moving a robot uh, then we also immediately look at how you program locomotion or, or motion into the robot and then you download the program and we actually start seeing the the NXT Mindstorm move. So that is it for this video and the next thing we'll do is look at installing the software.